Tony here from Lightwave Digital. Today what I'm going to do is show you how you can take a, a bullet dynamics using cloth effects into Chronoscope to uh, correct any errors quite quickly. So I've got this scene, if I just play it through. So I've got my cloth and it's revealing the Chronoscope logo. But if you go through you can see there's some little glitches and little bits that could be better. Now I could play around with this for another half an hour, an hour and get it right I reckon or I could just take it through to Chronoscope and in 5-10 minutes have it sorted so that's what I want to do. So if I just quickly explain my scene to, to you so let me go to effects and let's go down to the item properties for the bullet. So basically what I've got, I've got a drag which is a kinematic which is overlapping the actual cloth so as you can see when it's moving away it's dragging the cloth so that's what i'm using for dragging the cloth then i've got my base and my ground which is a static object then i've got a proxy object so the proxy object is actually uh let me just sh remove the actual cloth so and then if i go to my properties so it's kind of a low poly shape of the Chronoscope logo. I've done this because it means the calculation will be a lot quicker than trying to f f uh, for Bullet to try and figure out going around the H and the R and the O and the S and that. So I mean I could make it a bit slightly more complicated so we get a bit more bumps but I've just gone for a really quick and easy and then I've just to get so you don't render or show up I've just object dissolved it by a hundred percent like so. So what I've done is if I just turn this off, what I originally did is I had uh, a flat uh, plane subdivided and then I calculated that dropping onto the object. So let's just turn it on, turn drag off. Let me just jump to say 30. Okay, so once it's kind of uh, deformed and I've got the actual look I want. I then went into properties and I turned off subdivision and for the actual original cloth and then what I did is I went to save transformed object and then what I did is I brought it back in so I'll turn this back off put this back on And turn the original off and then brought it back in in that state and then reapplied the actual deformed body so we've got this shape already and obviously with the settings I change them slightly so the collision margins quite low self collisions on and then I put it's literally just playing around with the settings to make sure when you drag it off and stuff it's not too uh, rigid uh, there's not too much friction so it flows across your proxy object so even though i've got the errors let's let's take them through to chronoscort and adjust them quickly than maybe playing around with dynamics in here so the first thing we need to do is make sure you've got your object for your cloth selected go to properties from the add modifier go down and choose md baker double click it Make sure you've got a vertex cache folder in your contents folder. I already have and it's set up. It's everything really. You just need to keep the same unless you want different frames. But I don't. I want the whole thing. So I'm going to press OK. You notice it jumps to the end in your timeline. I like to double click and press OK again just so I've got it again. Once you've done that, under your effects tool, let's turn it off. The effect so we can see there's none on it. If we drag through. Next, let's go to Add Modifier again, and this time we're going to choose the reader. And then we'll double click the reader, choose file name, and choose the actual file you've just exported, the cache you've just exported, and press OK. So now, When you import your actual uh, vertex cache, drag the actual MD reader to the top and then 
drag along and you'll see the animation is now baked into your vertex cache with and we can see the errors look coming through so now we're actually ready to take this through to chronosculpt so we're going to chronosculpt what you need to do now is you need to drag in the actual object file so i've got my logo and when i bring this scene through you'll notice it's got the proxy object around it so we'll go to select object choose it and remove objects i don't want that and then the transformed cloth object i'll bring in and, and then lastly we go into the vertex cache folder and then we drag in the actual vertex cache so you can see now look here's the animation and you can see like different errors throughout that we need to get rid of so what i would do is just drag your timeline across until you see an error and you can see straight away here look there's some kind of error so if you've never used chronoscope before i've done a introduction to the interface so please go and watch that check out the other tutorials we're going to use the drag tool and i'm going to right mouse click to decide the size of the brush area and then i'm just going to click with my left and i'm just going to pull it to the side now i know i can see stuff at the back but the camera isn't so it doesn't matter for me i'm not bothered so let's drag it along as we can see there's a little bit so what we'll do is we you can just quickly be dragging this along and then adjusting around that area so let's have a look what else so we're going along pull along and we can see there's a bit here and a bit here so again let's pull this out let's pull all this out adjusting it so we're not getting any in our area showing up like so and a bit there look and then you carry on doing this but next all i want to do is i just want to keep going along the timeline until all these errors like in here are kind of gone and so i'm going to quickly do this Okay, so removed all those errors. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Might be the odd one that I'm have to come back and do. It stayed quick. Uh, all the errors are here. Look, and on any of them, you can come in and you can manipulate how they ease in and how they ease out as well. Is if I come across there, Bring that one. And any of the animations, the more sorry, you can extend either way as well. And it was only at the beginning here where we've got the little bits of error in that. And if we keep going through any kind of little flicks, we can just remove like so. But once you've done this, uh, like I said, at any, any stage you want, you can come in and you can use these tools. And you could maybe sculpt in bulges. Again, I've just sculpted right into the actual uh, actual model. But you can sculpt in and out. And those will animate, those sculpts will animate in there as well. But let's say I was happy with this. So what why are the cloth selected? We go to file, export MDD. I'm gonna go into the original We'll call it the same, but I'm just going to call it V2. 
save it let's jump into layout lightwave layout double click the reader file name choose the next version and press ok and then the adjustments have made and then when you go through if you still see little adjustments always make sure to turn on vpr to make sure what they look like in your render Let's also have a quick look at it full screen, make sure it looks okay. Thanks for listening. Look out for the next tutorial.